Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. So today is day three of Vlogmas and still going strong, yay. <laughs> so today, since I mentioned this in my video yesterday about the holiday traditions in my family and the fact that despite the despite me being an atheist, that I enjoy Christmas. And I'm sure I vlogged about this years ago. Um, it has been six years. I don't remember half of what I've vlogged about in the past. So if I've talked about this before and you've seen it before, well, you're gonna have to hear it all over again. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, I mean, growing up, um, I've, okay, I never really was a Christian um, I, as a kid. I know my mom was sort of a Lutheran and so was my grandmother, sort of, and my grandfather was Catholic, sort of. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I actually was never baptized. My mom decided not to baptize me. She said that I should grow up and decide for myself what I want to be. So that, you know, I've mentioned in the past that my mom had issues, but that's one of the things I'm like, you know what, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I mean, to be perfectly honest, being an atheist, having been, if I'd been baptized or not, really wouldn't have made that much of a difference to me. But at the same time, you know what? I'm glad that I don't have that hanging over me. Uh, it's, it's a weird thing, but yeah. Uh, so I was never baptized. I didn't go to church until I was six. I did start going to church when I was six. It was my own choice. And I actually still remember uh, the reason why. Uh, my grandmother and I were out at a park somewhere and we ran into the people from the local church because we literally lived a half a block down the street from um, this little church uh, in Chicago on Seminary and Lill Avenue. So if you're from Chicago and you have any clue as to the north side of Chicago, Seminary Avenue and Lill, there's a little church on the corner there that was built in 1890 something or 1880 something. It's It was a pretty old church because uh, I still remember they had a uh, 100 year anniversary celebration of the building of that church at, at some point and there were all sorts of fancy officials and they had these ceremonies and all this stuff uh, which was kind of interesting but regardless so my grandmother and I were um, somewhere in Lincoln Park um, taking a stroll and we ran into the ch people from the church. I was familiar with it. I never actually went to the church services, but we always participated in the Christmas bazaar and the rummage sales and all that kind of stuff. So I'd been in the church before. I, I knew the people, I knew the pastor, that kind of thing. So we ran, in, uh, ran into that and I knew my, gran my grandfather went to services every Sunday. No one else did. My grandmother really didn't. And sometimes for Christmas Eve she would go, but. I usually stayed home and my mom generally just didn't go, period. So, um, but then we were there and I remember the pastor, I think the pastor specifically invited me to start going to services. He's like, yeah, you can go with your grandfather. And in my little mind, I was like, oh, I get to hang out with my grandfather. Cool. <laughs> so that's the reason I, I started going is because my grandfather went and I wanted to spend more time with him because I love my grandfather very much. Um, he, I, I, I grew up speaking German, so to me he was Opie. So I had Opie and Omi, and uh, and that Opie from the Andy of the Show, Opie, O-P-I, is the, I mean, you can do Oma, Opa, or Omi, Opie, um, and for some reason, I think just because of the region that my grandmother came from, that Omi and Opie was more popular, which is why I grew up using those terms. But anyway, I went to church with my Opie. And just to give you a, a, a little background, um, I was a very good reader. Uh, I taught myself how to read at the age of four, um, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Uh, I, was, I was actually watching Sesame Street and they had the little phonics segment. Um, there, was a, um, there was a little guy, I still remember, it was a little cartoon guy and he had fat little legs. I still remember this, like the little, little cartoon guy with fat little legs. And he came up across, you know, there was a word and it was like different letters. And he would go under each letter and he'd sound, sound them out. And the word the, that, that it still sticks in my mind to this day when that light bulb in my head went off, because the word was milk and he was under the word M and he goes, hmm, eh, oh, k, 
you know, and then he just kept doing it faster and then he get, and then just, I just saw the, and I just looked at it and I saw the word and I was like, I could read the word milk. Boom, right there. And I got so excited about that because I loved stories and books so much. Uh, and I, my grandmother didn't read me nearly as often as I wanted her to. So I remember running off, grabbing my Sesame Street storybook that I had. And there was a, do a story in there about Dora and the dragon. The whole story was about D words. So it was Dora and her daddy and the dragon and all sorts of other, in like, um, I think they had a D word that they used for the castle. I forget exactly. It's just lots of D words. And so I sat there and I went through every single word, sounded each letter out. And I, since they were all fairly simple words, I didn't accidentally miss read them just because I didn't know how they were pronounced. Plus my grandmother had read me the story before, so I was familiar with the story. But I then sat down and I was like, come here, I'm gonna read you a story. And I read her the whole story. And <laughs> that's when I started reading. And from there on out, I was just a voracious reader. And someone at some point gave me a children's Bible. Um, it was a, a picture book and it had all of the, like the children friendly stories from the Bible. So you had, um, um, I was gonna say Adam, but no. Uh, well, yeah, they had Adam and Eve and stuff, but oh yeah, Joseph. And uh, Joseph and his many colored coat was um, probably my favorite um, story in that uh, in that children's Bible thing. Um, that's the one I remember the most. I mean, obviously there's a lot of other stories, but I've also read the actual Bible twice now, um, cover to cover. And I like in terms of my memory, I'm like I don't remember if if I remember the story because it was in the children's Bible or if it was in. The regular Bible. I mean, obviously the racier stories are going to not be in the children's Bible, and I've read some of the really racy ones in the real Bible. And uh, If you haven't read the entire Bible, uh, <laughs> there should be a not safe for work warning on the book, I can tell you. <laughs> I digress again. Um, okay, so yeah, so I read the, I had read the children's Bible at that point, and I went to services with my grandfather, and I still remember the first service I attended. I don't remember exactly which story the pastor decided to tell that day for his sermon, but it was one of the stories from my children's Bible. And I still remember laughing out loud and saying, you actually believe that that's a true story? <laughs> um, the pastor had a few words with me after the service. And they immediately enrolled me in Sunday school. Six months later, I got kicked out. <laughs> because I kept challenging the teacher in terms of what she was teaching and the different stories of the Bible. And I'm like, okay, that, that can't possibly be true. That can't possibly have happened. <laughs> oh. These are fairy tales, come on. Uh, so yeah, I got kicked out of Sunday school. Uh, <laughs> but I kept going to services until my grandfather passed away in 1983, which um, I would have been 11 at the time. And then after that, he was gone. And I think they wanted me to go through confirmation and I was like, nah. So yeah, so anyhow, that's, like I said, I, I'm an atheist and I kind of always have been. However, uh, now that I have gone on that completely long tangent, um, holiday traditions. My grandmother, I mean, we had um, a very contentious family. It was just my grandparents, my mom, and my, my uncle, my mom's younger brother. And there was a lot of fighting and a lot of arguing. My grandparents fought, my grandparents and my mom fought, my mom and my uncle fought, just everyone was always fighting and arguing and it, it was always a lot of tension and everything in, at home. And I was always caught in the middle of it. <laughs> and so, um, but for some reason, I don't know if it was just a mutual agreement among all of them or what, but the holidays, everyone got along and everything was good. And most, for most of the year, we didn't eat very well because we were pretty poor. Um, we mostly lived off of my grandmother's, or no, my grandfather's social security income, the four of us. My uncle lived separate from us, but um, the, the four of us lived together and we were mostly subsisting off of his social security, um, which was, let's see, 
somewhere between three and four three and four hundred dollars a month. So and our rent, I'm just I'm trying to think like back in the seventies, early eighties before he passed away. Um, our rent must have been like around one twenty five, one fifty a month. So that was a fairly good chunk of that money. And then the rest of the money went for, you know, because I needed clothes because I was growing. Thankfully, uh, we got a lot of clothes donated to us from the church. So I was wearing a lot of secondhand clothes. But hey, I had clothes. I had shoes. I, I really couldn't complain too much. I hated them. <laughs> to this day, I will not wear secondhand clothes if I can help it. But looking back on it now, it's better than not having anything at all. You know, I, I can't say that I, I, I um, was completely ungrateful because I wasn't. You know, it was, it was good to have something to wear. And it was nice whenever we could go out and buy something new, but it was, you know, far and few between. There were times when, when you kind of had to buy something because it just wasn't, you know, you, you, you take what you can get within, the, within donations, but, you know. Um, but for the holidays, I, I think my, my grandparents just scrimped and saved so that for the month of December, we actually had food in the house and we ate well. And so it starts, and, and the, the holidays, it started with Thanksgiving and then there was my birthday. And then there was um, St. Nicholas Day and there was Christmas, my mom's birthday and then New Year's. And then in between all that time, we always had an advent calendar and not the ones, well, I mean, we had the ones that you opened up with little chocolates in them, but my grandmother actually had a big felt one with little pockets in it, and she would put little treats in there. There'd be quarters in there and little pieces of chocolate and that kind of thing. And um, every every morning I'd, I'd wake up for the next, you know, like just, I would be like buzzing with excitement to see what was in the next pocket. You know, it's little tiny pockets like this big. I mean, they, they, they didn't hold, like they barely held a quarter. <laughs> Okay, so they didn't hold much of anything. They were tiny little things, but it was it was a lot of fun. Even even my mom got into it. Um, when I was a little older, she actually did her own Advent thing. So I had the Advent calendar thing from my grandmother, but then my mom had this Advent calendar. It was kind of like a little wooden tree with little um, boxes on it, and you had to open the little. They were like little folded um, cardboard boxes. Um, not quite cardboard, but heavy paper. And then you open them and then she had a note inside. So every single one of them had a note. And it was a, um, a treasure hunt, basically. So it, the, the first note would be a clue to find the second note. And it was usually like anywhere from three to five notes until I finally found the, the, the treat for the day. Um, so, you know, as, as, as contentious as everything was with my family, they all made an effort to make it really special for me. And I really, really, really appreciate that because to this day, I still love the holidays. I might be an atheist, I don't believe in God, I don't, you know, like the whole Christian thing and everything. Um, Jesus Christ, um, I actually, to be perfectly honest, I do believe that the person existed. Um, he was born. Um, was he the, the figure from the Bible? Was he the son of a, of, a, of a deity? No, I don't believe in that at all. But I do believe that there was this person, it, there might have been two, more than one person that they kind of glommed together into a single entity, I don't know. But there are uh, Roman records. So whoever it was that was crucified by the Romans um, at the time, there are Roman records of this person. So we know that there was a person that existed. Um, whether he's the same person that I know that there is also written records of, of not necessarily the three wise men, but of, of some wise men coming from Arabia and coming to to visit um, for the for for some kind of a birth. Um, and there was a conjunction of I think it was Venus and Jupiter that does an extra bright star. Um, if if all of that historically did happen, um, the, the three wise men would have only would have shown up in the area of Bethlehem sometime. Uh, in March and not December, but you know, uh, you take you take all these different little stories and myths and things, and they could have been multiple people, and you stick them together and you get this person. But um, at the very least, the person who was crucified um, actually did exist according to the Roman records. I don't, I can't imagine the Romans would actually make up a figure like that. But you know, again, I digress. But there's a there's a lot of you know there's there, there's some there's some interesting historical stuff. Um, that did happen back then that the Bible um, includes. And, and I think, you know, trying to 
uh, delve into what actually happened and the truth behind the stories um, is one of the things I actually find really interesting. Um, so the, the I, I really don't have an issue with people saying Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or whatever. I like having a tree up. I don't put an angel at the top or anything like that or a star. I usually put a bow. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it looked, all the twinkling lights are very pretty and the food's really good and having friends and family around and I like the music. I do, I, I, I will I will admit that I only like the secular music, um, like Jingle Bells and that kind of thing. And I don't tend to listen to the, the heavier Christian themed songs for obvious reasons. Uh, but but I love the holidays and it just still makes me feel good and, and I have so many good happy memories. It's it's it was the time of year where all of the fighting stopped in my family, all of the hate stopped in my family. And okay, yes, it was just people putting aside their differences temporarily to make a child happy. It was fake basically, but you know what? They made an effort. They did make an effort, and I have to say I appreciate that because it did make at least part of my childhood really good. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of crap that happened in my childhood, but those those days were really good and I will always remember it and I will always cherish those memories. And, you know, it's just, you know, and, and, I, and some people might look back and be bitter about being lied to and all this stuff, but you know what? They were making an effort to make me happy and I don't see why I should be angry about that. Um, some people have, have told me, like, ah, oh, you should be mad because they were lying to you. Like, no. No, I shouldn't. Um, they, they were making an effort to make me happy, and that... That's pretty cool. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, uh, in, in terms of... Yeah, okay. Alright, so thank you again for le letting me ramble. Um, not entirely sure what I'm gonna talk about in tomorrow's video yet, but, uh... Stay tuned for more Vlogmas. Take care. Bye-bye.